All right, guys, welcome back to Life at Home Chemistry Shores. So we are back today for our final uh, video in the redox reaction series. And today we're going to be looking at balancing a redox reaction in an alkaline solution using the half reaction method. If you need to know how to balance uh, these reactions in an acidic solution, or if you need to know how to recognize a redox reaction or do some of the things that we've covered in our previous videos, I'll put some links below so you can uh, watch those videos if you've not already. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, so let's take a look at an equation that is in an alkaline solution. And so this is going to be very similar to what you've already done in an acidic solution, except you there's a couple of extra steps. And you'll notice I've kind of summarized the first part of it is just balance the reaction as if it were in an acidic solution. So if you don't remember how or the steps to do that, I'll put a link in for the video that covers that as well. So you can go back and review that. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and just hop into it. And I'm going to do another one anyway, so you'll kind of see the steps as we go. If you remember, the first step for balancing these equations is you need to split this into the half reaction. If you look, I've already put the oxidation numbers in there, and we can see that um, our iodine goes from a minus one to a zero, so it is being oxidized because it's losing an electron. And then our manganese goes from a plus seven to a plus four, so it's being reduced because it's gaining that electron. And as you guys remember uh, from previous videos, you're always going to have oxidation and reduction reaction going on at the same time because something's going to be losing electrons and something's going to be gaining electrons. So let's go ahead and break these apart into their respective oxidation and reduction half reactions. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our manganese portion. And then I'll, uh, once again, I'll leave the aqueous out of there. And so I don't have to write it down every time. And we've got our MNO2. And then we'll also, I'll down below or over to the side here, I'll put our iodine as well. And just as kind of review, uh, we'll look at, you know, how do I know that I have to uh, take this and use that half reaction method? I mean, first of all, we know we got a redox reaction because we were having changes in our oxidation number. We're in aqueous solution, uh, so we can get some participation from the water or the acid or alkaline or from H plus or OH minus. It, that are in the solution. And uh, the biggest thing though, is we, when we start looking at this, first of all, we've got minus one, minus one, and then charges of zero on this side. So there's no way we're going to be able to put coefficients in there and actually balance these charges. Uh, also, it, it, we run into an issue here with the oxygen because we've got one manganese, four oxygen, then we got one manganese, two oxygen. There's no coefficient that's going to make that balance. Um, as I add is I put, you know, a two over here to increase my oxygen. I double my manganese and I mean, there's just no way to get it to balance. So we know that the conventional methods are just not going to work in this case. So we know we have to use our half reaction method. So let's go down here and just go ahead and follow the steps. We know we need to first balance our species, you know, other than oxygen and hydrogen. And in this case, I'm balanced. I'm one manganese, one manganese here. I need to add a coefficient to balance and let's divide these up so we don't get them mixed up. So I need to add a coefficient to balance my iodine. All right. And then I need to balance my oxygen by adding waters. And so in this case here, uh, I need to add two waters in order to get the oxygen that I need. And here, I don't really have to deal with that because there's really not any oxygen or hydrogen in play here. So on the, on, in, in this case, I'll just go ahead and finish it out with this side. So in this case over here, I need to add some hydrogen or H plus in order to balance out my hydrogen. And so I'm going to do, okay, so I should be fairly well balanced now. However, I'm going to have to balance my charges. So if I look 
here, I know I've got 4H plus and a minus. So that's going to give me a 3 plus net charge. Here I'm neutral. And so I'm going to have to add some electrons. So let's go ahead and write this down. I need three electrons plus four H plus. Okay. So if I add all my charges up, I should be balanced. Now I'll come over to this side. I got to balance the charges here. So in this case, uh, you can see I've, I've got a two minus net charge. I got a zero. And so I've got to add electrons. So I'm going to get two I minus builds iodine plus two electrons. So that gets me balanced out. Now I need to multiply this by something to where my electrons wind up being the same for both half reactions. Now, I like this one because this is a good, uh, a good one for you to be able to see that you, you, you can't just always, sometimes you have to multiply both equations by something in order to get the electrons to balance. In this case, I got a two, I've got a three. So I'm going to multiply this one by two. And I'm going to multiply this one by three. That way I'll have six electrons in both of them. And I'm going to go ahead and add these, start adding these back together as I multiply these out. And then I'm going to start doing my canceling. And there's not a, a near as much to cancel here because you don't have really any waters or hydrogens down here. So it's mainly just canceling my electrons. And then my final equation for my step one is going to be okay so that was step one now since we're in alkaline solution and we're you know we need to do a couple of extra steps and it's really not that complex so we know if we have if we're an alkaline solution we're going to have an excess of oh minus and if we have an excess of oh minus anywhere where you see an h plus it's going to automatically be neutralized by oh minus so what we want to do is we want to add um, oh minus to both we want to add hydroxides to both sides uh, both reactants and products enough to neutralize out all of my h plus so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add plus eight OH minus, um, I've already got a plus in there, plus 8 OH minus, plus H plus, 8 H plus, and we know that those are going to combine to make 8 waters. And of course, I've got to add my plus 8 OH minus over here on this side. And then uh, after that, I want to cancel out water wherever I can. So I've got four waters over here. I've got eight over here. So I'm going to cancel out four of those. And then my final equation is going to be okay. And so we see that it is relatively similar to. Uh, what you did when you were balancing it under acidic conditions. Uh, the biggest difference here is, you know, you just had to take a couple of extra steps and make sure you put some OH minus in there. Uh, and we did that step and then we canceled our water. So we've gotten that finished up. And I also wanted, I'm, I'm glad I was able to do this one because it uh, showed you what would happen if you had to actually multiply both uh, sides by some number to get your electrons to, to, to balance out. So hopefully this was helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. And if there's anything you need additional help with, you can leave it in the comments and I'll try to make a video to help out with that. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for uh, this video. It was fairly short, but I just wanted to cover those extra steps for uh, balancing a redox reaction in a basic solution. 
So if you've uh, got any questions or comments, just leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to like this video. And I will see you guys here very soon.